Coming up on uh, Wednesday, April 9th, a big treat for Bloomington Normal audiences. That's when the uh, lettermen come to town. I have uh, Tony Vitala on the line right now. And uh, Good morning, Tony. How are you? Just fine, Ken. How's things going there? Really fine. And uh, I'm kind of excited about you guys coming back to town because I've had a chance to catch you several times, and I just really think you guys put on a whale of a show. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we, we've been coming back for years and years, and uh, we have uh, some new things in store for the people that have uh, seen the show before that... Uh, if they come, they won't see the same old show. We're doing a whole bunch of new stuff. You know, that almost uh, is a requirement for entertainers, I would think. If you do the same thing over and over, it's got to be tiring for you guys as well. We, uh, it, it could. It, every time we get a new song in the act, uh, we always uh, feel more excited for a couple days, you know. And, uh, but the audiences make every show new anyway. Uh, but you do have a responsibility. Some entertainers don't. They do the same old show year after year. But when you become uh, perennial, like we are in so many cities... We change the show about 60 to 70 percent from year to year. Mm -hmm. So um, it keeps it current and uh, keeps you guys on your toes as well. Right. Well, you know, you have to do the old hits. You've got to do the songs that people know you for. But after a while, though, people come not just to hear the old songs. They come to be entertained. And that's, that's where the difference uh, lies. We feel we have a responsibility not just to duplicate songs we've recorded, but to... Uh, made people forget their troubles, you know, when they come into a concert for two and a half hours, there's enough troubles in the world outside, so for those two and a half hours, we've got them, and we're going to make them uh, forget all the cares and just enjoy themselves for a while. You know, we talk about the old songs. You were with the group when it first started. In fact, I think you're about the only original member, aren't you? Yeah, I, I originated the group along with uh, Jim Pike and Bob Ingham in 1960-61, uh, and uh, however, Bob Ingham left the group in 67, so... We replaced him with Jim's younger brother, Gary Pike. So Gary is almost an original because, you know, 67 was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, then the group stayed that way with Jim Pike and Gary Pike and myself until 74. And then uh, Jim Pike left the group and we replaced him with his other younger brother, Donnie Pike. So we've kind of kept in the family. And here again, you start thinking about how long ago 74 was. And, you know, this is our Donnie's seventh year with us. How, how do you figure that the Letterman have uh, maintained that popularity all through the years, Tony? Well, I think I could touch on just a little while ago. We were, uh, the entertainment value of the show, not just the fact that we were having hit records every couple of years, which we were fortunate to do, but the fact that we could have uh, the show progress and improve even without hit records. We uh, were brought back time and time again on the basis of our entertainment value, like Sammy Davis Jr. He had very few hit records, but he's one of the... Uh, highest paid entertainers now. Uh, Wayne Newton only had one hit, and uh, that kept him alive because of his entertainment value. So we put ourselves in that category, mm -hmm. and not just a record act. You know, there are some there are some performers, uh, and again, I don't know if the performer is the right word for them, some recording artists that you go to see in concert because you like the records. You go to see the concert, and you're disappointed. Uh, it's not quite living up to what you expect sometimes when you go to see some some performers, and I won't mention any names. However, the Letterman, I think, as you mentioned, not only the hit records are there, but when you go to see a Letterman concert, you're, um, you're pleasantly surprised, let me put it that way. Right. Well, the thing about the single market, uh, we haven't had a single hit record, I mean, a top ten real big one for about six years or so, and uh, it, the last one was uh, Love, the John Lennon Yoko Ono tune that we did in 73. Uh, but uh, we still were fortunate enough to make albums, and one complements the other. When you make a good album, and I don't mean just an album that has one hit on it and ten other obscure songs, every song in every one of our albums, uh, all 49 albums of ours, have memorable songs that you can associate with. And so when the performances are going, when singles aren't going, people buy the albums because they know they're going to be good. We sell an automatic amount each time we release one. Uh, we. I just want to interject this in case uh, the listeners didn't know. Uh, we've been with Capitol Records for 18 years. <laughs> been with our personal manager, Jess Rand, for the like amount, and the William Morris Booking Agency for the same amount. So we have a standard, solid uh, foundation for our group. Mm -hmm. But we just left Capitol, and we started our own label called Alpha Omega Records last year, and we have a brand-new album out called Love Is. It's our 49th album. It's on our own label. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about that. We'll have to make sure we get a copy of that, I'll tell you. Just happen to have a few in the bus. We'll give you when we uh, see you on the ninth. <laughs> okay. Listen, I know you do a lot of traveling around. How many how many weeks a year are the Letterman on the road? Well, uh, last year, in 1979, I counted it up. And I was, I, we worked about 190 days. 
so it's really on the road you're around a little longer to get to those concerts and things but uh, we take a month off around the christmas holidays and uh, then we work for five months basically and then we take a full month off in the summertime so it's 10 months of work separated by two months you know two one month vacations mm -hmm. but then during the five months we're working we're not working all the time we're, we take a week off for easter we take a week off for thanksgiving uh, and then uh, various times throughout these five month periods. Mm -hmm. So uh, I imagine it's about about nine months out of the year we're working. Yeah, you're back from Japan, as I understand it. You're on tour there. Yeah, we just completed our ninth consecutive uh, tour of the Orient, which includes Japan, uh, Hong Kong, Bangkok, Singapore, uh, the Philippines, Kuala Lumpur. We were very very big in the Orient. Uh, I think it's due to the fact that in the early and middle 60s, the rock invasion never really got a foothold in the Orient. The softer sound kind of prevailed during all that acid rock era. And so the Letterman had consequently had much more notoriety in the Orient than we do in this country even. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we've recorded several songs in those languages over there. We had three hits in the Philippines in their language of Tagalog, which is their native language, and mm -hmm. interspersed with English, which is kind of unique. And also we've had a few hits in Japan, and when we go to Japan, we, we do our introductions in Japanese, and we learn a couple of different uh, Japanese tunes to put in our, incorporate in our show every year there also. You know, the uh, Japanese, it's, it's interesting because when you're over there, I'm sure you're learning things just like we learn things uh, when we travel or when they come over here. Uh, and it's interesting to see how many different contributions other people can make to other parts of the world, like the Japanese have given us the transistor radio, the Japanese automobile, the Paul McCartney book on how to pack a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> I don't mean to get into all that, but I, I, I know I didn't read anything on you guys when you were coming in or going out of the country. Well, we came in about a week or so after that happened, and uh, because of our name and our respectability, the customs officer didn't, they didn't even check our luggage, all of our musicians and ours, because the Letterman name is like, uh, it's a brand when you buy a product that you're sure of. Mm -hmm. and that was a high, respectful thing that they did with us. Exactly. Well, I know that the folks are going to be in for a real treat when they when they uh, when they see you on the ninth of April. It's an interesting thing how this all came about. It's interesting how how sometimes you're expecting a, a good show and then you you come up with a disappointment and then another good thing happens. For instance, uh, Harry Balafonte was was uh, booked in originally. They had to drop that because his tour fell through. And then to find out that the Lettermen were coming, well, that was super good news and it brightened a lot of people's spirits. I'm sure. Well, I just want to say it'll be good to get back in that area. Our audiences there have always been, always been good. We've always done real happy, nice shows there, but I just want to say we have a, a lot of new material now, so in case someone saw it a couple of years ago, it's not going to be the same show. It'll be a completely different uh, type of format. Uh, we, we're bringing in some horns this time. We're bringing in uh, some trumpets and trombones and saxons, and, uh, which will give the, a new dimension to some of our arrangements that, we, that some of our records have. And uh, we're doing a disco dance medley where the three lettermen actually are dancing. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see that, it's, I'm not saying it's done seriously, but it's, it's <laughs> done good fun. And uh, no, really, it's, we do have we hired a choreographer. We work with him for about a month or so. And it, it, with the new disco lighting and new, we have new wardrobe, and it's it's just going to be a fun evening. It should be. Tony Butala, thank you very much, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you. Good talking to you, Ken, and I'll be sure that uh, we'll lay out a couple of new albums for you to treat your listeners to some of the new stuff we have out. All right, terrific. Thank you, Ken.